again, I'm Henry T. And welcome to the show we call Be Inspired with Henry T. Today, we say be inspired with a legend. All right, like I always tell you, when Henry T. has something great big, yell and scream, hey, come on by the TV. Grandma and Grandpa, bring them in too. And the little kids outside riding their bikes, bring them in. Because today, Henry T. has the legendary Jim Holzman, longtime friend of mine and yours. Wow, 42 years, teacher, educator, coach at Albuquerque High School, several times New Mexico Coach of the Year, several times National Coach of the Year, state championship trophies everywhere, and even married the homecoming queen and his wife, Mary Lois. There's so much more. But we got to get to the subject. Re the resumes take way too long when we talk to gentlemen like Jim Holzman. Thank you, Henry. Thank Coach, you what much. a pleasure to have you here. Well, just to add a correction, one thing, Mary Lewis was a teacher at Albuquerque High. Not, our, I didn't hustle the students. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, compliment to say. <laughs> you got the prettiest girl in all of public schools. Well, that's what she tells me all the time, so we're doing right. Teacher, relay, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> See, I get so nervous I make mistakes around this great leader. <laughs> Leadership. Let's start right there. You, to me, when I watch you from outside and seen you in your work, the word leadership stands out. You've been a leader for thousands. Who taught you that adjective, leadership? Who inspired you to be somebody way back in the day? Well, when I think of that, I go back to Charlie Renfro and uh, Pete McDavid, Jack Rushing, Tony Valdez. Those guys were all my high school coaches at Albuquerque High School. I graduated there in 1949. They left a lasting impact on me, and it really helped me to follow them, their examples. And they believed certain things. They tried to pour it down our throat. Courage, confidence, and if you had those ingredients, then you could immediately pick up on uh, uh, being someone maybe just a little bit better. Now, you're not going to hit the stature that soon, you know. But over the long run, uh, I had great coaches and teachers that really helped me. Even further back than that, who told you, little Jimmy, you're going to be a good boy, but you're going to be somebody someday if you follow our rules. Mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, who were those early leaders in your life, Coach? Well, your parents are very important to you in developing courage and leadership and punctuality and doing things right. And uh, the problems we see in the nation today or in Albuquerque alone, I sit there in the morning and I look at the street and it's uh, 10 minutes after 8. I know school started at 8 and the kids are coming out 10 minutes late to go to school. That's parent responsibility. I look at these things of the streets, mobbing, kids 14 years old going up and down streets, breaking out windows and automobiles. Whose responsibility? Mom and dad. And what does mom say to some of them? Well, he's a good boy after he shot someone. You know, that's ridiculous. I think that uh, the family, starting at home, personal discipline is developed. You're going to do things right. See, that's one thing. You're only going to do things two ways. Either do it right or you do it wrong. And why not bring them up right? Wow. Athletics has been most of your life. Oh, yeah. Happily married man. Kids galore that you've inspired to be somebody athletically. Uh, you've been an educator. They've gone to be astronauts, senators, governors, whatever. And they all come back to see their coach. Well... What do they say to you when they come back? Well, I tell you, uh, those that come back, have, you have to remember, we had a strong community totally supporting us. We had everybody from downtown. I didn't have to go out looking for them. They'd come to look for a Bulldog game. And we had to give them a good product. And if we gave them a good product, uh, they're going to come back. Tremendous resume, the trophy case is full, scrapbooks filled with pictures and stories by sportscasters and uh, sports writers. 
like myself describing Jim Halsman and those great bulldog teams. But before the greatness happened, how did you come to making the decision, I want to coach, I want to teach, what do I have to do? What inspired you to want to be a part of their life as their athletic leader, the coach? Well, I think it's the, men I mentioned, uh, like Charlie Renfro, uh, he was an eighth grade coach for me. Well, Charlie had uh, been a Bulldog track coach for eight years in the 30s, and he graduated uh, from the University of New Mexico. He's in their Hall of Honor, and here I am at uh, 14 years old, having a chance to play for the man. And uh, soft-spoken, he did what he wanted to do, and he was a real role model and example. Uh, from Tony Valdez, we got the guy that was hard-nosed, do it right. And then all, every one of these guys had the one thing, do things right. And it rubs off on you. Yeah. But uh, Pete McDavid, when uh, he gave me the real chance to really get started coaching, I got out of the Army in 1954, and I went down to visit him. I said, Coach, what am I going to do? He says, well, do you want to coach? I says, I sure would like to. He says, well, why don't you come out here and help me with track? So that's what I did. And then I worked up the ladder there, and it, uh, I got to the place where I'd taken practice teaching and practice coaching. I did it under Mickey Miller, Hugh Hackett, Clem Charlton. Wow. And, uh, well, I had two wonderful years at Highland. And uh, you take those men that I just named, uh, they're all great men. Every one of them is in somebody's Hall of Fame someplace. And I had the chance to play under them, uh, work under them, uh, listen to them, their lectures, and... Uh, then there was always Roy Johnson, and I got up to UNM. He was one of my teachers, and that was a real experience. So you put all that together, and uh, yeah, you develop a trend to want to do something like that. I always heard that coaches might be the most organized people on the planet, and you're the epitome of organization. I have never in my entire life, ladies and gentlemen, seen or been around anybody more organized. Ask him for this and you get it right now, pull it out of a file. Oh, you want that? Go to this drawer here. Here, Henry, have a look at that. I've got some copies if you need one. Organization is his middle name. Where did you get that skill? Was it innate? Did you learn it from somebody? I got it from somebody. I got it from the United States Army. Wow. <laughs> they shaped me up. And uh, when I was in the Army, Henry, I enlisted and went through officer candidate school. And I became an officer of the United States Army. And then within that command structure, I was a platoon leader, a company commander, and an adjutant of a battalion. And uh, I assumed control over what they wanted me to do. And I think the Army was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me because uh, I served in the Army and uh, I was on the Atomic Evaluation Group of Army Field Forces and I flew a little bit with Army Aviation as a liaison officer. And I had all these experiences that helped me. Remember, I didn't have a college degree yet. I got a degree and then started putting it all together. Amazing. Let's go back to the early days of coaching. In fact, it's unfair, but the first day we find you on a school ground with a whistle around your neck, when was that? What's the scene? Describe it for us. Well, I was down in West San Jose, down there in Morales, and uh, I had this uh, little league team <laughs> in summer working under Max Shirley. He was running the program there, and uh, they gave me... Uh, Escobosa, Chilali, es Escalante, I mean, all these teams up in the mountains. Wow. And uh, I went up there and I coached them in the morning, and I came down to San Jose there, West San Jose, in the evenings and uh, did the afternoons there. And uh, I was a one-man show, so I had to be the only coach, so I've ever learned something. When I think of you as synonymous, I think of green and white. I think of you walk in the hallways of old Albuquerque High School and Bulldog City, the new Albuquerque High School. And back in my days, the days were short-lived, but I got to play against you a little bit or sit the bench against you, whichever it was on that particular day. But 
Coach Holzman was important to all of us because you walked in his gymnasium and there was a screech on the floor. It was impeccably clean. It had good traction. Everything was organized, great scoreboard. Man, he was so punctual. Referees on time. What an environment. You created an environment early on that I think was really the catalyst for a lot of us to learn and practice what Jim Holzman preached. Of Man, setting I, had up really, the I, don't, I had a lot of help on that. Uh, see, I remember very well Coach F.M. Wilson. He was the athletic director and I said Albuquerque High. And uh, he set a real precedent for us. And then Mr. Ream, our principal, and then you go down through the alumni of Albuquerque High. Uh, an example, 1923, the Bulldogs were undefeated in the football. They didn't have enough money for uh, letter sweaters. So Chester French, who's a very well-known gentleman in his business, uh, Chester French bought them all these things. And this group, see, that leads you up a ladder. And then 1924, there they uh, came up with the colors green and white. See, there were three colors at Albuquerque High, green, white, and gold. Gold was selected at that time to be the academic color, and green and white, the athletic colors. Now, that's something, the green and white, I didn't have anything to do with that. They built it on me. I inherited it and kept it going. Wow. I mean, what an atmosphere. You yeah. walk in Bulldog City, Bulldog Gymnasium, not only was it crisp and clean and organized, the scent of the popcorn was like contagious. You bet. You ate it all. Amen. <laughs> Am I recalling the atmosphere? I can oh, yeah. smell that popcorn today. Yep. You did pretty good on it, too. Wow. <laughs> Your days as a Bulldog coach, early on, and you coached all the sports. Well, Henry, you tell have to us look, the beginning of yeah, your Bulldog I you, history. I tell you, the, uh, if you were in physical education, you had to coach three sports. There was no question about it. And uh, we uh, went out, and Dr. Wright called me in, and he hired me as a head track coach. So I was a head track coach. And he says, now you're going to be the assistant football and the assistant basketball. That's fine. Because I had done that at Washington and Harrison Junior Highs. And so uh, I stepped into that. And uh, that's the way it is. That's my job. I teach physical education. I coach three sports. There wasn't any question about it. And then the George Fair, our head basketball coach, left the school. And uh, I didn't apply for the job. They gave it to me. They told me, you will be the head basketball coach. And then he said, you also be the head track coach. You used to be the <laughs> football. So we just kept doing the same three sports all along. And uh, gosh, coaching Royal Smith's football was just great. And uh, I had worked with Ed Garbanian and, uh, in track before that and uh, working into his shoes. And uh, gosh, it was just wonderful. I expected to coach three sports. We're at halftime. Okay. That was a quick first half, coach. Stay right there. And you stay right there. Second half, woo! Do we have a few things to talk to Coach Holzman about? Don't miss it. Right here on KZQ Channel 32. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. Welcome back, I'm Henry T, and today 
We have the legendary New Mexico Sports Hall of Famer, Coach of the Year on the high school, on the city level, state level, national level. He's a humble man. Man, I'll tell you what, it's fun going back in time with Coach Jim Holzman. Coach, let's leapfrog into the heyday of Bulldog basketball. I remember one year, 1971, uh, Paul Soto bringing the ball up the floor. You're playing Hobbs in the pit. Coach Tasker pacing the sideline. You're pacing the other sideline. You've got green on. He's got the black jersey on or the black sport coat. And place is packed at the pit, 18,000 back in that day. What a ball game. But that was an era of great bulldog wins and players. Well, you know, that's uh, true. Uh, that was one of my high points about uh, the program. We had to build a program to bring the people in. And we played that time in five consecutive New Mexico State Championship games. Now, we didn't win them all, that's for sure. But boy, did we learn a lot and did we bring the people in and the community got behind us. And I remember that 1971 game that you mentioned so well. Uh, <laughs> the year before, we played them for the state championship. And uh, I was kind of a rookie, I would say then. And uh, they were the highest scoring team in the nation that year, Hobbs. And uh, I believe it because they wiped me out. I think they started pressing me when I got off the bus, <laughs> off, across the parking lot, all the way, you know. And uh, they did a job on me, 123 to, I think, 91, something like that. But we sure learned from it. You know, you learn from life's experiences. And I said, they're not going to do that to me again. So the next year, in the pit, black and white TV, first televised game in the history of New Mexico, of a state championship game at the pit. Mike Roberts did the ball game. A lot of people forget where Mike started, but Mike did our state championship game wow. that year. And uh, we won the game 81 to 80. And uh, that set the thing go. You know, people followed more and more. And uh, that took it way up to the 90s, and we won it four times in the 90s. So there's a lot of action going on in between. But we had great people to coach, great people to support us, and uh, you put it all together with those great assistant coaches, and hey, we were all right. Amazing. Assistant coaches in that game, who were they? Jess Miranda was my number one man. He just, well that goes back a bit. See, Jess was also our head baseball coach. Everybody had to, you know, do a little bit. And Jess and I both worked for George Fair, and when I got the job, Jess, you stay with me, okay. And uh, that's where the thing started. And then Abe Estrada came along there. And uh, but the first staff I had there, I had Harold Bailey, Dr. Harold Bailey now. Boo Boo. Boo Boo, that. Boo Bailey. And he was sensational. And he had my C team. And he really drilled those guys. And he, he was a very dignified Afro-American gentleman. And so one day I walked in the back of the locker room to see what was going on. And he was speaking to us half the time, you know. He was not talking like a dignified African gentleman, but boy, was he letting them have it. <laughs> I walked out the back door, I shut up. <laughs> well, that group that he started then, that was our state championship in 1971. Unfair question, ladies and gentlemen, but if anybody can handle it, he can. Starting lineup in that game for the Bulldogs. Okay, Rick Clark, Ron Powell, inside. They were great. We had uh, Alvin Metters at the left wing, Phil Edmond at the right wing, and Polly Soto at the point. And uh, Lee Morgan came in off the bench. He was my only substitute in that game. And, <laughs> and Lee did a great job. But uh, that's the way it was. And we had paid the price the year before. Tell the people, how many people in the stands that night? Okay, that could capacity under the pit at that time. 12,400 with Mike doing the ball game on TV. And uh, the uh, pit, incidentally, was designed and built by Joe Bainey. Joe Bainey was our football quarterback at Albuquerque High in 1947 and 8. Wow. And one of my old friends back to Jefferson Junior High and passed. But uh, he did the, uh, he was the architect for the pit. So people often said, that, that pit wasn't built for the Lobos. Joe built us for the Bulldogs to play in. Ah. 
<laughs> and that took care of that. Well, many people <laughs> called it your second home. Well, I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> You're always there. Well, we weren't always there, but... It sure seemed like it. But, you know, we played uh, about, gosh, seven champions, four, seven, 14, 20, 23, five. We played about 32 ball games in the pit there. And it was really a thrill to bring the kids down the ramp in front of the hometown. That was really great. You know, great career, great coaches like Tasker and all your associates in Albuquerque, and we can bring them forward. That's why we have to do part two of this show in the near future. Before we get too far along, I would love for you to tell the story about how you met Mary Lois and what that wonderful lady has meant to you and what kind of life you've put together. Well, <laughs> sorry, Mary Lois, that's the way it goes. Um, she was on the faculty at Albuquerque High School, taught uh, history and uh, physical education. And uh, we met there in a teaching capacity. And uh, I noticed that she was fairly attractive and you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, then she chased me. She chased me all over the place. I told her, Mary Lois, I'm not that kind of a boy. She said, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> you know, and we had that type of relationship. And uh, eventually uh, we got married. And that's when the poor lady really had to pay the price. Uh, you know, I don't think she ever missed a ball game. I coached with basketball, football, or track. I figured she comes <laughs> by the time got up to the her end of that career for her, uh, I think she sat in 1,500 basketball, football, strap wow. mates. And she really paid the price. Amazing story. And, uh, but she always, uh, oh, like little things that uh, happened. Uh, I would go home after a ball game and go to bed and she tapped me on the shoulder. I said, oh boy, my age, this is great. <laughs> and uh, then that. Uh, Roll very tenderly, she says, uh, why did you run that in defense against Hobbs? <laughs> and I says, well, I'll show you. And I bring out the video, and I show her that video. And then I thought, why did I run that man defense against Hobbs? Wow. So that's the kind of things that went on in our lives that uh, made it very enjoyable. And I might add, ladies and gentlemen, Nolan Ryan's number one fan sitting right here with you today. You're a Texas Ranger fanatic. Well, I just got back from Dallas. Wow. I went over there and watched Oakland play uh, the Rangers and the uh, California Angels. And uh, now we've been following them through the playoffs. And uh, between them and the Cowboys, I've got always something to do over there. Were you there the night the Rangers clinched the title? I was there. Wow. My goodness. That was fun. You're fun. You got that <laughs> energy, you got that smile, sense of humor, but man, you can crack the whip too and lead guys to the state championship. I don't know if this is a fair question, but I'm going to throw it coach as well. Your legacy. We all know about you. We all have stories. We share stories. Man of great integrity, great leadership. What a coach. 60 seconds. He's got to change the game with this timeout. Nobody's better than Coach Holzman in that 60 seconds to get the message to his players on how to go win a game. Man, people praise you. When you're objective with yourself, what is your legacy or what would you like it to be? Well, uh, I'd like to think of uh, we accomplished something for the students. And uh, I think that uh, we put 74 basketball players into college. Wow. And up at Highlands, they were very good to me. They took uh, seven, we have 17 degrees, Bachelor of Science degrees from Highlands University. And then we have Willie Banks, Greg Brown, and Kenny Thomas to UNM. Well, you put all that along and all these kids have graduated. Uh, teacher, I was a teacher. Wow. That was fun. That's a lot of kids going to college. Hey, don't forget the seven or eight track men I had. Ooh. Tony Sandoval is now the head track coach at University of California, Los, in, uh, 
up there in Berkeley. That's wonderful. Coach, you're a man of great faith. Before we leave today, will you share who, in fact, your number one inspirational leader is and who your head coach leader literally is? Well, the man upstairs, Henry. Same thing you're telling me. You know, the guy upstairs, uh, he told me to take this job and uh, do my best at it. And I was put down here to take care of Albuquerque High. So uh, with that in mind, uh, that's exactly what I did. Could have gone other places to coach and things like that. But uh, that wasn't what I was supposed to do. I had a knowledge of the community, the people, and everything around there. And uh, get them into college, get them working that way and educating them. And uh, that was my job. But I was told by someone upstairs, this is what you're going to do, boy. Get out there and do it. Wow. And you did it so well. Well, sometimes. <laughs> What if he says, when you get up there and they have it, he says, Coach Holzman, we're not done coaching yet. I got a whistle over here. Here's a basketball court. I want you to go back to work up here. I want you to be my coach up here in heaven. What's your answer? I'd say, well, maybe he made a mistake on his personnel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. He's got more coaching to do, ladies and gentlemen. Coach. Thank you, Henry. Way to go. God bless you. Thanks for all you've done for us. Us. All of us. Thank you. Tomorrow morning again, right here on KZQ Channel 32. This is where you find all that special inspiration that Coach Hultman laid on us today. 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Be right here. We'll be here together. You've got a story. Don't forget to call me with it. 907-4523 or email originalgameface at gmail.com It's been great talking with you today right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here. Be inspired with Henry T. 8 o'clock on KZQ Channel 32.